topics to the Node School uh, lessons. So what I was going to do is have a wee look. Actually, we can use that test. I wanted to see there's a test module here. So uh, test anything. All right, let's do that. Let's test all of the things. So not a lot of documentation. So I did run the installer for test anything before. So I'm cheating a little bit because I knew that there was something, but I've never done this one before. So we can test anything. Let's make a directory, go, in, go into the directory and then test anythingness. All right, log it out. Now we're going to do the log it out one, which is the only thing that I just quickly looked at. And uh, vi1 uh, log it out .js. All right. Um, this one is log it out. Developing apps and modules is fun. Yada, yada, yada. What about if you want to test them? How are you going to do that? Well, you can console.log the results. And in this case, it's saying uh, okay, let's assume you wrote a function called a modifier, which takes a string and adds a space to it. How would you check that function is working? Maybe your first idea was calling the function with a value in console.log. Uh, the result and check its output in the console. Try this yourself. We're going to provide the location for the awesome and modified module in process.argv2 and the string for the test in three. So what we effectively are doing, I'm not going to worry about the headers on this file yet. We're just going to go var and modify is a function passed to us from uh, require and then require process.argv2. So the second argument, sorry, the Third argument, node is the first, zero. One is the name of the script. And then two, the third argument, is the first command line uh, argument. So we're going to be given the name of a module. We're then going to console.log that, uh, that function and, it, and whatever it's being given as the third item and then if we uh, test come on lamp don't let me down test anything verify o1 log it out all right we are correct and it's pretty much exactly the thing that we just did there so that's that's a good start but these things usually go that way they usually like here, look at this incredibly basic thing. And then it escalates up there very quickly. So I don't know about this one. So I'll be really interested to see uh, how we go. Save as O2. And what was this one called? Um, tell me what's wrong. Okay. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's wrong. No. How about just what's wrong? Yeah. But then without the apostrophe, it just, so how about we just go wrong.js. There we go. All right, we don't need this or this. And we're doing, what are we doing? Uh, asserts. Okay. Yep. Yep. Write a passing assertion for the function is call number that will assure that it returns true when passing 42 in it. Path of module exporting the function will be provided through process.argv2. Argv. Write a passing assertion. So, okay, so first of all, we're going to have the path of the module. So, we're going to go var mod, var mod, I don't know, equals process.argv2. So, we can just make it a bit clean for ourselves. You can obviously put process.argv into the assertion itself in a second, but for now, sometimes it just heaps, it's, it's a bit easier if you're less verbose, for me anyway. Um, so that's the module. Uh, part of the module exports, exporting the function will provide it. Okay, so that's a module as a function. 
All right, if you're wondering what's wrong about console.log, you think about this, if your functions are gonna be more complex, it's gonna be harder and harder to actually read the output. Yes, that's true, and it's also not impossible to automate it. So if you wanna do a whole bunch of assertions, then we should be able to do them and just have them all be fine unless something's uh, wrong, in which case you can you know, throw an error. Oh, like they do down here. Okay, so if blah, throw a new error. Okay, so if not blah, throw error. Now we get the error every time something is wrong with a message, what's not working. However, you know there's a nice built-in module for this called assert, which we have not actually got yet. So we're gonna go var assert equals process.argv3. Assume that's correct. Uh, oh, I'm very happy with my CPU usage. The reason that I look like I've had a bit of a go at this one already when really I've actually just only got up to this is that the CPU was spanking at 100% the whole time and I've just uh, changed it to super fast, you know, encode the things as quickly as possible mode and it seems to be working wonders. So let's hope that stays because that's 4% CPU. All right, so I wonder what the output's gonna be like. This could be another one of those terrible videos, but this time the audio's okay, but the video is ridiculous, so we'll see. Uh, enough of that, what am I doing? Uh, what was the thing? We want to, path of the module, okay. Writing a passing insertion for the function is call number. Write a passing insertion for the function. Okay, the path of the module exporting the function will be provided through process.argv. Write a passing insertion for the function is call number. So, okay, so whatever's exporting it is actually gonna be, is call number. Okay, so is call number is the function that we're gonna get that will assure that it returns true when passing 42 into it. So should we, we should be able to go is call number, pass in 42 as, a, as an argument, and re it, it returns true. So basically it's going, it's a function that takes, uh, uh, as long as it's the number 42, it's like, true, that's a cool number. All right, fair enough. So then we wanna do uh, assert, now there's a few ways of doing the search. I was looking at that a few minutes ago just when I got up to this bit here. Um, and because I haven't used these very often, deep equal add 213, add 21 should be three. So deep equal should be okay, right? Like deep equal, deep equal, and then is call number, give it 42, and that should be true and um, argument must be 42. That's a good way of writing it because if I'm horribly wrong. So assert.deep equal is call number 42 should equal true. Argument must be 42 and that's the error message. So it's a useless function, but we can go test, all right, test anything, verify o2 wrong.js, explode, operator okay, expect, okay, function, not okay, two, correct function accepted, correct function accepted, operator okay, expected true, actual false. So, Expected true, actual false. So are we passing 42 into the function there or what's going on? Mm -hmm. Let's print that out again, and just go through and have another read. Uh, resources, no documentation, assert. All right, so we can always check the documentation as well. That might be useful and assert value message, assert deep equal. All right, so actual expected and then the optional message. Actual any, so 
any must be the type. Test for deep equality between the actual and expected parameters. Primitive values are compared with the abstract equality comparison. So primitive values. Okay. Only enumerable own properties are considered. The assert.tv implementation does not test the prototype of objects, attach symbols, or non enumerable properties. For such checks, consider using assert.deepstrict equal instead. This can lead to some potentially surprising results. <laughs> it's JavaScript. When are there not surprising results? For example, the following. Oh, you know what else I should do? I should do the. Get the little chat thing happening as well. Mm -mm 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 -mm. In case there's actually humans in the world who are watching this. All right. Come on, Chrome. Get your act together. Wait, what? I open Twitch and suddenly I get 100% CPU. That's interesting. How does that happen? What exactly was going on there? Okay, so maybe in my previous experiments, I had Twitch, the main page open, and it's heavy on JavaScript. It's all I can think of at the moment. Um, and sorry, I got one more little trick here to do because I need a little pop-out thing. I should have done this before, but I had to reboot because it was all a bit insane before with 100% CPU, which may or may not be because of JavaScript on the Twitch site, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And I have to click the thingy widget and the widget has like an API key, so I'm just being secret. Oh, I could be secret squirrel mode, couldn't I? Okay, please hold. Secret squirrel mode is in effect. All right. Okay, done. Launch. Go to the place where the things live. And cool, okay, windows are all set back up and I can get rid of this and that's fine. And now go back to main screen. All right, so let's try and solve this. Actual and expected parameters, primitive values are compared with abstract, yada, yada, we got that. Um, this does not throw an assertion error, error A, error B, D equal, an exception is made for map and set, okay. We have objects, object, obj, obj1, obj2, obj3. Obj1 and 3 are the same. Obj1 is itself is fine. Assertion error. They're not. Obj1 and obj3 are equal. Obj1 and 4, oh yeah, so that's just a copy of 1. Search and error, prototypes are ignored. Okay, interesting. Um, let's just quickly search for true. So, okay, test if value is truthy. Well that, well, that was a good search. Value, message, value, message. Assert dot okay. If value is not truthy, an assertion error is thrown with a message. So I could do that, right? Like I could actually go, let's just get that over there for a second. Oh, you deal with it. So, um, uh, truthiness. Let's just go. That's right, correct? Uh, assert OK. Here we go. Assert OK. False. It's false. Fair enough. So, assert OK. Throws assertion error equals true. Test the value is truthy is equivalent to assert dot equal value true message. Okay. The value is not truthy and assertion error is thrown. Value true. True. Okay. So let's see if that works. Write and test. 
expected true, actual false. Wrong function not, okay, so wrong function not accepted. So, great. Not okay too, F correct function, not okay too, correct, fu correct function accepted. Mm, operator okay. I'm not sure exactly what we're supposed to be doing here because that doesn't seem wrong. That's what's sort of frustrating right now. Well, that's the other thing we can test, isn't it? So let's go node and then let's just go assert dot okay, like we saw, true thing is not true, undefined. So what, it doesn't, okay, true, hmm. So sometimes it's about figuring out, it's not a function at all. Und undefined, oh, hang on. Um, Var assert equals require, I'm an idiot. Assert and then assert.okay true. I don't know what I'm doing. Assert dot things. Okay, so it's there, it's got deep equals, it's got equals, it's got okay. And then if we go uh, 10 equals 10 undefined. Why is there no return? I thought the whole point was that there was a return. If the value is not true, an assertion error is thrown with the message property. Okay, so maybe it's just that blah. Okay, 10 is equal to 1. Assertion error blah, and then explode. So that's interesting. Uh, it's like assert OK false, it's false and it throws an error. So that's what we've got there, right? Um, one is truthy, zero is falsy, false is falsy, and false with the message is also falsy. So, what does it want us to do that we're missing out on? Now we're going to add a nice little module called assert, var assert alternatively, resources, functions. So the documentation is not great on this. Write a passing assertion for the function is called number that will assure that it returns true when passing 42 into it. The path of the module exporting the function. So the module is provided on the command line. 42 isn't, apparently we just feed that in, fine. Um, if you're wondering what's more wrong about console.log, then think about this. If your function is gonna be more complex, it's gonna be harder, blah, blah. So it'd be better if only a test told us if something works or not. Um, Surely we could probably test each output with a not equals and warn if something is wrong like this. If blah, throw new error stuff. Now we get an error, error every time something is wrong with the message, what's not working? However, no, there's a nice built-in module. So that's true. We can do that manual if blah, but um, we're using the module, tells us how to use it, and here's a link to them, and yet it's unhappy. Var is cool. Oh, hang on. Is it because you're an idiot? It could be because you're an idiot. Ha! Huh. Require a wrong function not accepted. Not okay. Second test, correct function accepted. So it accepts the correct function. We assign that to a variable, which is a good way of doing it in here, because then we can call that function with 42 and an error. But why doesn't the assert throw, if it's failing, 
Okay, hang on a second. Um, is call number 42. That's provided to us. All right, so this is getting to be a little bit ridiculous. So one of the things in Node School that you can do is test uh, test anything uh, solution. Is cool number, I needed to require it. Is that what's going on? And the assert that they used was different. Hmm. It's because I didn't require it. And because it was a module with an export, I needed to require it so that is cool number became a function. Otherwise it was just getting the variable name. So let's try that again. And then console.log is cool number. And where is it? Oh, create your own module, meta test JS to test your test, then run your code like this. Node, no to wrong dot meta test dot JS. It could be a file. Okay, so this is cool. Wow, this is actually helpful. I don't, you don't normally see those. Normally when you do a run, it ends up being, uh, huh. and now I'm typing. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there because normally I'm sitting here talking to myself. So, as I was saying, it's uh, weird when you run the Node School things to actually go name of the thing. Sorry, name of the the Node School thing. Run code. Uh, not Pike. Do you know the Node School stuff? Um, because it's very awesome, but they're really inconsistent in every different you know mod workshopper is uh is very different and inconsistent in the way they implement their sort of tests so normally you can just go run blah and feed it your own sort of uh, uh dumb, stupid file so what anyway what i'm going to do is i'm going to take them up on this i'm going to vi meta test well, excellent. Let me know if you want to know anything about the Node School stuff, because at this point in the stream, it's there's only like five, you know, tests. Uh, sorry, five uh, things in this workshop, and I'll stop talking and I'll just go test anything. So that's the npm module, and there's only five of them, and the first couple are really, really simple. So if you're interested, I can uh, quickly just go back through and tell you a bit about the Node School stuff very the, the basics of it um, uh, because they're pretty funky um, and they're good fun and if you want to learn javascript slash no this is absolutely absolutely the way to do it um, so yeah so you're my audience of one uh, anything you want to see i'm more than happy to uh to to let you know um, so the basics of the node school stuff is when you run this, so if I just dump out of here for a second, make a bit of room and go, okay, so you go npm install globally and the name of the module, in this case, it's test anything. We go enter, now you've got a thing. Uh, and then you run that because it's uh, in your global path now. And then you can see it's a thing and it does stuff and that's great. Um, if you need help, you can have a look at the help and a bunch of the commands here will tell you that you can actually run the same test anything and then a whole other bunch of keywords. For example, test, test anything reset. Uh, what am I doing? We'll reset the tests. So if you ever want to do them all again, you can do them all again. And then you go, okay, here's the test number one. And it's basically saying, if you want to write JavaScript and do a test, 
Um, what about if you want to console.log the thing? And then part of what it's saying here, I'll, I'll just quickly go back through these again because it'll only take a minute. Um, it's saying, well, let's uh, uh, right and quit out of this. Uh, let's, uh, instead of, we're going to pass you a method on the command line as the first argument. In Node, you have basically, uh, you have Node itself is um, the um, process, what they call process.argv, uh, process.argv, and then basically it's an array Come on, Muppet, what are you doing? Array zero is node itself. Array one is the name of the script that you want to run. So if you're going to run node 01, log it out. And then process.argv2 is the third argument on the, you know, that, that, that gets run, and that's the whatever you pass it to, to it. So for example, um, if you have, uh, if that script, um, if that JavaScript thing ends up just being uh, a method or a function that take has three argument variables. You could just type, you know, one, two, three, if it was expecting strings, and that would be argv two, three, and four respectively. So there's just so you know what's going, what the hell's going on. Um, and so the the puzzle where we have here, what it's saying is like, log it out. Here's the puzzle. Um, developing apps with module is fun, blah, blah, blah. But if you want to test it, blah, blah, blah. You can read this stuff later if you want. But it's just saying, if I give you the, here we go, try this yourself. We're going to provide the location for the awesome Emotify module in process.argv2, which as we showed before, is kind of like the first proper argument that you can pass to the script and the string for the test in process.argv3. So it's saying, if I had a function and I passed it and passed it a string, um, it would you know, concatenate two strings together, which in JavaScript is pretty uh, trivial. So what we're doing here is we're going require, and again, this is node stuff, so forgive me you know, if I go through some of the basics here, but the require is just like importing the, uh, the, li the library, but in you know, node sort of parlance, it's just a file usually. Uh, and it's telling you which file because it's process.argv2, and we're turning that into therefore a function because we're requiring the module. We get a function called a modify, and then console.log, whatever that function is and how it's written, which is sort of where we're going to jump to in a second, um, and process.argv3, which is a string. So here's a function, takes a string, and now do the magical concatenation. And then once you've written this out, this is actually the answer, of course. Um, making a scene, you're welcome. Just trying to sit, set it up a little bit here. So uh, when you want to run the test against this, so when you select one, whichever one you're on here, it immediately will then test against that uh, uh, that uh, puzzle. So test anything, verify, and it's just a text file. So we're just in a you know we're in a a, a folder here, directory I created. If we it's just, uh, CCAT is just a shortcut to pigmentize, so it tries to make things a bit more colorful. You can see that's the file that we're editing there. And then if we just go test anything, verify 01, and it'll go, oh my God, it's friggin' awesome, and you've successfully done it. And so then if we just run it again, you'll see this now says completed, and then we move on to the next puzzle. Now, I'm just sort of scrolling up because I've got all the fonts ridiculously large so you can read anything. Um, Tell me what's wrong. Write a passing assertion for the function is cool number. Okay, so there's going to be a function is cool number uh, and a passing assertion that will assure that it returns true when passing 42 into it. So basically, just using our little example, yeah, you can see that. Um, if we had is cool number 42, that should return true. Of course, we haven't defined a function there, which we could. And in fact, was sort of the thing that we were going to do anyway. But anyway, I'll get back to that. Uh, Vi02, let's have a look here. Cool. So we're requiring the module assert. There's a whole bunch of different modules. And one of the nice things in here is they generally have a link. If we just click to the link down the bottom of the sort of included default node modules that you can uh, require, because it's just the, you know, way you get your modules in, but there's shitloads of them. And uh, if we go through here and see assert, it's the same because, you know, it's JavaScript. It's the same sort of in the browser if you're, um, uh, I still think making a scene was funnier. 
uh, and kind of appropriate. I'm setting the scene today in Node. Uh, there was a bridge and a troll and a princess who needed rescuing, but then she was like, screw you, I don't need rescuing, I'll rescue myself. And so the troll went home. Uh, that was the scene. Uh, um, all right, so it tells you all of your cert stuff. That can be kind of useful. And one of the things is that it is a good way of figuring out which one you need. <laughs> um, I liked the uh, assert.ok in this one because we're dealing with a truthy statement. It's basically saying if I've got a function and I pass it 42, it should return true. Okay, um, so that's cool. So I went assert OK is cool number. Now the the, uh, the 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 error message on the end is optional, but of course why not? You know you want to put your error messages in there. And then if we uh, so what just a step by step here uh, var assert equals require assert again because it's a require that may, means assert is now a function. Um, and in JavaScript, if you're not JavaScripty and you know like I'm no professional here, but uh, JavaScript has these kind of like first class objects, like everything is an object, so a function is an object, so therefore functions can have methods. So it gets a bit weird where you can actually kind of have a function that, that you, you know, pass in um, argument variables and it does stuff, or you can also have a whole bunch of other methods, which are just other functions inside of it that do it as well. So that's a little bit different in some ways to some languages, but um, Maybe not so much. Uh, require a cert. So anyway, the way that you require stuff and actually uh, can be a little confusing about how you get access to different parts of, of objects. Uh, var is cool number equals process.argv2. I think, actually, I think what we need here is to require this as well because that is actually going to be a function and then a set okay is cool number should come back with true so if we just test anything oh, oh verify o2 verify o2 yay it's all wonderful and easy so not bad so far and what are we doing we're getting up to number three or actually there was something here i wanted to do because i saw it and i thought well that's interesting run so run is is not always used as well as this i think in some of the workshop modules which is where um if you verify it passes you obviously some um i mean you you can have a look at the source to this and you can see the solutions and the folders and the and the example test um sort of files that they use uh which they test against your code but sometimes you know you don't want to cheat you just want to try and figure it out yourself sometimes you can run the command which is the same as kind of going like you know, node o2 wrong.js, and then it'll explode at you because it's like, I have no idea what you're talking about because process.argv2 doesn't exist. And then you're like, okay, so now I have to give it a thing. And then it's like, well, what kind of thing do I need to give it? And luckily in this case, I reckon it's, um, so like they say up here, so you can sort of see, you can run your code like this, node o2.js metatest.js, and metatest should have modules.export. So if we were to just actually, Let's just make a bit more space here. Give me a second, we'll go run. Okay, so it fails at running, but it shows us the nice example. We can run met, what was it called? Meta test, that sounds like a good plan. And modules.ex, module.exports, yeah, exports. Uh, equals function n return. Now you should um, not pike, you should uh, recognize the basic, fairly obvious format of the, you know, module dot, module exports is basically just a way of exporting something as a function, and it's saying that equals the function which takes a parameter and return uh, returns true or false. So that's fairly straightforward. But now that we've got that, we can actually go node o2, um, and then the meta test. All right, and it, it, it's it's uh, passed. So if we don't want it to pass, we could of course just change that to two, I would guess. Oh look, and explodes and throw assertion error and then we get the um, assertion error, argument must be 42. And it's like, all right, we can do that. And so now 
that's super useful in some of the workshop modules when you're really stuck and you don't know what sort of you know you're meant to be doing or how to move forward sometimes going from running the verify to the run will actually give you extra information you didn't have before so i likes it uh, but they don't always provide a hint like that for like what kind of thing you should do to try and run it without any of the the testing that they've already provided um, all right, tape it together. Oh, it's got a lot of text. Let's go up and have a look here. So first of all, we're just going to save as 03 tape.js and read some things. All right, write tests that output tap. Write tests that output tap that test the following properties of a function fancify. A function will be provided in process.argv2. Okay, so we can reuse this and go fancify and write tests at output tap. I don't know what tap means. Oh, there's a standard for outputting data from tests called tap, the test anything protocol. Okay, I've not heard of that, so this will be something interesting to learn. Um, uh, what do we got here? Fancify string returns a string wrapped in tilde star tilde. Fancify hello returns hello. Okay, so again, string concatenation takes an okay, optional second argument that converts the string into all caps. Example, fancify hello true returns hello in all caps. That's fine. We have some fun string manipulation methods in JavaScript. That'll be fairly decently easy. And it takes a third optional argument that re de determines the character in the middle example. False bang returns hello. Oh, okay. Testing with a stirt still has some downsides, even though we don't have to check all the values ourselves, like in the first level, but now we only get not very readable errors when something is wrong. Otherwise, our tests don't do anything. Maybe we still like to see some information that everything is okay. Uh, test anything protocol. Readable for humans, one module for testing the tap outputs tap is tape, another is tap dirt. It takes a description of what you're testing and a callback function with a parameter t that works quite similar to assert. You use it to write your assertions, however, it also has a function t.n that you call when you are done with your assertions. The tape module is not included in Node, so you need to install them, that's fine. Are you recommending we use tape? You are, okay, so npm install globally tape here's an example how to test the last function with tape okay so the previous function that we did is called require cool.js this call number accepts only call numbers function t okay so test is tape okay so we've got the tape function and it takes the error at the start. So let's have a look at this as well. Let's have a look at this module. Nice. Test, timing test function, yada, yada, yada. Tab version 13, timing test. So uh, is that the actual description of the test? It might be the description instead. You've already figured out how to do it in Python. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, yes. IPython, I hope, with lots of pretty colors. Um, or what's the name of the one with the uh, in the browser that's pretty awesome? They renamed it. It was something about something else. IPython Notebook. And there was, now you can do ipython dash T something. I won't get too lost, will I? I won't go down the Python path at the moment. Python's pretty awesome. Uh, it's much easier to get things done, but Node has callbacks and it has the event queue, so you can do a lot of stuff concurrently, seemingly concurrently, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, you know, Python, single threads, just saying. All right, testing with tape, resources, tap on Wikipedia. Uh, I don't think we need to read that right now, but tape should be useful to have a wee look. Oh, okay. Globbing.
preloading module, things that go well with tape, pretty reporters, okay. All right, so for now, let's just go back to trying to bodge up something that looks like it's getting anywhere near the thing that we're actually supposed to be making. Testing with, so it still has some downsides. Uh, yeah. Tape did that. Here's an example of how to test the last function. So we are being asked to do this fancify that tests the following properties of a function. Okay, so the function is going to be provided. So all of that stuff down there is great, but we don't need to write it. Uh, so fancify hello returns hello, takes an optional second argument that converts the strings into all caps, great. And a third optional argument determines the character in the middle is an exclamation mark, which is fine. We can, so we just need to run the tests, right? So we just need to be all like, Assert dot something. No, we weren't doing assert. Well, we were doing. All right, let's think about this a little bit more clearly. We want to go var tape equals require uh, tape, and then we want to tape something yada yada, and like a bunch of different tests test the following properties of the function fence by one two three so we need three tests I would say because it's testing three properties of the function so tape um, uh, wrap string I'm thinking that that's what these are Let's just check it out. Okay. Test equals tape. Tape timing test function t. t dot plan two. Uh, with function. Mm -hmm. t dot equal type def of tape now function yada yada whip. Hang on a second. Require tape test function t t dot plan t dot equal. What is t? Am I being a muppet here? Why don't I know where t comes from? That's like it's the argument that's passed to this callback function, but why does it have a method plan two? Test name options callback. Uh, create a new test with an optional name string with an optional name string. Cool. So I was right. That's an optional name string. Uh, the options and a callback. So optional name, optional options object, and then callback t fires with the new test object t once all preceding tests have finished. Test execute serially. Available ops are skip timeout print depth. If you forget to t dot plan on how many assertions you're going to run and you don't call t dot end explicitly, your test will hang. How the freaking hell do I know where these things come from? T dot plan, t dot end. All right, declare that, declare that n assertions should be run. T dot end will be called automatically after the nth assertion. All right, well then we don't need all these, do we? I've never seen this before in my life, so this is actually quite entertaining. Um, was this optional for the, were the options optional? Uh, optional ops object. So as long as we're calling a function, it doesn't care. Is that what that looks like? Looks like it to me. So basically name, and then function. All right. What are you doing? Function. Function. 
T to stick with naming convention so we don't go a bit balmy. And then T dot plan three. And then they'll run serially. So T dot equal Okay, t dot equals one, and then there was a variable set. So, sorry, I'm just reading through these. I don't know if these are completely viewable at the moment. Let me just make them a bit bigger. So, the test is the is the require from tape. So, this is the tape as a function. It's taking the string, which is the name of it, and uh, we should just call this whatever. Three tests and function t and then the callback is sort of defined down the bottom with the plan all right so now we should be able to just call i skipped down too quickly didn't i can we just call t dot whatever set time dot function now start minus one 100 set timeout t dot equal plan two it's a timing test T dot equal. Pass one, fail one. One should be equal, not okay. Two should be equal. Okay, so all it's doing there is setting timeout. So the example is setting a timeout to basically count whatever that is, 100 milliseconds or nanoseconds or whatever it's, whatever the... Oh no, test dot equal, that's the second test. Here we go. All right, so I'm, I'm getting a bit more on top of it here. So we go, this is the testing function. This is the callback, all right? So they've got two arguments basically to test, Time, and timing test and the function. That function then uh, tells us that we're gonna do two tests. The first test is just whatever the date is now, uh, type of date dot now function, uh, is it, equal t dot equal t dot equal t dot equal actual expected message assert that actual equals expected with an optional description of the assertion message alias is t dot equal okay so t dot equal Oh, type of date dot now. Okay, so we can again do that. Um, uh, type of date dot now is a function. Great, and then date dot now called as a function gives us the time in Unix time, and then whatever the parameter is that does it for now. Okay, so I'm rocking this. Um, forgive me if I seem like a complete muppet, but I'm just slowly trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Um, so the first test is the uh, the type of date dot now. It's a function, and over here it's saying this is what uh, we're testing, and it should be a function. So that's true. So down here we get uh, one. Uh, uh, okay, should be equal. Yes, they're both functions. Well, that's the the return at least. Cool. Thanks, Doc Pi. Um, and then we're setting a, just a variable inside this whole function here of date.now, which uh, then we're just calling 100, I'm gonna say milliseconds, but it could be nanoseconds, I can't remember, it doesn't matter. But basically, after, uh, oh, this is good, right, so uh, start date.now. So if we do, um, this, is, this is good, okay, so var state, Right, var start equals date dot now. I think we're calling the function. So we go start. Okay, we get a number in Unix time, it doesn't matter. But if then, what this timeout is doing here is that this is the, the set timeout goes all the way to here. So we got that, that's the function here, but it's got two arguments. The first one is the function to run. And the second one is how long to wait before you run it. And so because this is running, and because, you know, if JavaScript was ridiculously fast, then we had t dot equal and they'll both compare to each other, they might, I don't know, theoretically be exactly the same and so therefore pass, but um, this is just making sure there's 100 milliseconds in between this t dot equal, well, sorry, the start, and anyway, I'll shut up because that doesn't make sense. So date dot now, 
as a function minus start. So if I was to go var uh, end equals date dot now, and then go start start minus uh, end, you know we've got uh, minus fifty seven thousand three hundred sixty eight. Uh, is it equal to a hundred? Why a hundred? Expected a hundred, actual a hundred and seven. Interesting. Anyway, that's useful for now. Uh, I don't want to get stuck and down, bogged down on that. So plan dot t. Now we want to go t dot. And what are we using? T dot equals t dot something. T dot. Okay. Plan. End error. Fail. Pass. Skip. Okay, assert the value is truthy with an optional description in the message. Well, we better go back quickly and figure out what it was asking us. Um, returns the string wrapped in. Returns. Returns the string wrapped in yada. Example, fancify hello returns hello. It's not going to give us hello as a string though, is it? That's what I'm wondering. The thing about this is it's going to be very specific. It's either going to give us random strings and it wants to know that it's been bookended with the tildes and the star, or it is actually going to give us hello, in which case we can test for hello, but I doubt that's going to work. So let's assume they're going to give us no, because so, it says example. So all we really want is that whatever the string is has uh, I wonder I wonder Okay, give me a second. Let's just read down the bottom here and just see if it gives us anything extra as to what we're actually testing. Is it a generic, any generic string? Description what you're testing, a callback function with a parameter T works quite similar, yada yada yada, tape, no, it's true, that's all true. T dot OK. So that's the truthy check. We want it. Not Pike says it. What do you reckon? You reckon is it gonna just ask for it's minus one second? Yeah. Ah. Hundred milliseconds I'm not going to get stuck in that dates and times in any of the languages are always fun I don't know there should be just like the super friendly what did I find the other day I have to show you this one um, TLDR it's a, an MPM module called a TLDR uh, for example tar and it just gives you the too long didn't read version of the man files and uh, I thought that was kind of hilarious uh, TLDR DF TLDR F disk oh doesn't exist no all right find stuff here zip yes anyway I thought that was amusing um, date modules my god <laughs> yes ta I think there's a funny XKCD comic about that one um, Quick, we can save the world, but only if we can remember the exact commands this one time on how to zip up a directory of files and preserve its structure. Bow, bow. Uh, I think we all kick back to the manual for that. All right, come on, strings. We're gonna get a string. I cannot believe that it's gonna be the word hello. So we're just gonna have to look at old tape drive data storage. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. I like the future and all of its fancy, nobody cares whether things are stored in the magical cloud. <laughs> it makes so many things easier. Tape drive storage. Um, this string isn't going to fix itself. Optional second argument that converts the strings into all caps. So there's got to be like a conditional... How do you tell? <laughs> How do you tell if there is multiple arguments to the fancify function. Hmm? How do we tell that? I wonder if there's any more examples here. 
So actual and expected, so it's the equal is expected with an optional description assertion message. So fancify, well, actual expected message seems to be a theme, right? So the actual is gonna be fancify and then process.argv2, I'm guessing. Yeah, uh, the function will be provided in process.argv2. Okay, so, so if that's two, then probably three is where we're getting, where are we getting this, this string from? Right test that would just tap the, the tests, the following uh, probably is the function fancify. The function will be provided in process argv2. Fancify.string returns the string wrapped in blah. Example fancify hello returns hello. It takes an optional second argument that converts the strings into all caps. It takes a third uh, optional argument that determines the character in the middle. So what do we actually where are we getting the string from? Where are we getting the string from? That's my question. We're not getting it from process.argv, are we? Because it doesn't mention that at all. Tape it together. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't mention anywhere where we're getting that string from. So, what about if we just make up our own damn strings? That'll be easier to test. <laughs> Why not? Um, wobble will give us um, this is this is gonna this is definitely no chance of this working. Um, Fancify, and then, no, that's not right. This is where Fancify wobble, boop. All right, so that should be a uh, test. No, missing semicolon. I don't think so. Uh, fancify, such a stupid word. And what am I missing? Why has it got a big red X on it? E dot end. Wait, wait, what are you doing? All right, and let's just quickly t dot end and check that that doesn't need to be called. T dot planned automatically after the nth or any more assertions at the nth or after t dot end is called, they'll generate errors. We don't need that. All right, cool. Um, what's the problem? Uh, oh, t dot something, right? Like we need a t dot whatever. I see what's going on. We haven't actually called the method on the function. Um, not truthy. No. What do they use? T dot okay, yeah, of course, because that was the uh, that was the one with the truthiness. We don't want truthiness. We want lyingness. We want T dot equal. Of course we do, don't we? Maybe. Yeah, let's find out. Happy? All right. So if we run this once, yeah, come on. What are you doing? Get out of it. Um, Test anything, verify. I'm running this at the moment because I want to see that it maybe passes one thing. Okay, wrong function not accepted, wrong function not accepted, correct function accepted, operator okay, expected true, actual false. Okay, four, wrong function not accepted. Okay, so actual false. Mm, it doesn't give us a line for where it's failing, but if I just, hmm, if I just do, keep going, 
bullheadedly along with the idea that I'm just feeding it my own strings. Who knows whether that's actually correct or not. Um, return string wrapped in blah, example fancy by hello, hello, true. Okay, so that's yeah, not this one, just the one below. We want to go true and then we want to go, let's try that again. And then false and then bang. And then that should be bang, and that should be bang, and that should be wobble. Wait, wait. <sighs> Too much coffee today. This light bulb, my God. Stop it. Uh, all right, let's try this again. Verify. Ha! We could make up our own words. I told it. It's probably not a bad idea to actually put in there that uh, you can make up your own string inputs for the fancify uh, function. But anyway, what do you reckon, not Pike? Does that make any sense whatsoever? Do you have any questions? Are you still there? Because that was kind of interesting, actually. There's not a bad. Yeah, woo indeed. Woo indeed. That wasn't actually a, a bad example of the kind of node school giving you enough to kind of choke yourself, but then finally, if you do go through the docs and you make some terrible assumptions about what the hell it is they're trying to give get you to do, you can generally get through most of them. There's a couple I've found that have been like horribly, horribly um, difficult to complete just purely because you don't actually know what on earth uh, they're trying to get you to do. So what was this one called? Call me maybe. So we'll call this one maybe. Uh, save as. All right, and what are we doing? Again though, if you have any questions, if any of this JavaScripty nodiness is like a bit odd, but hopefully it's, doing, it's making more sense as we go. Cool. Cool, so callbacks, right? Sometimes people kind of get stuck in the like, wait a minute, what's the callback? But it's actually quite a nice feature. It's one of the reasons like node is node, I suppose. It's because you can kind of go, here's a function, just go and do it. Like go and read a file and I'm gonna do other stuff. And once you've finished, come back and interrupt me and then you can show me the results. And so that's how you get all that high concurrent sort of processes happening seemingly concurrent because there's just lots of these sort of deferred functions so nothing the main process doesn't take up much time it just goes i got a function go and do it and then i'm going to get on with the next thing and then it's you get a lot of child processes and stuff and there's some really nice core npm and node developers that i've chatted to have explained it a lot better kind of like threads exactly Zachary. Because uh, there are, I mean, like, I'm nowhere near clever or understandy enough about it, but uh, there are definitely lots of child processes doing background work. So it's very similar, I think. Um, but of course, I'm sure no developer would say it's absolutely not the same at all. And it's completely superior in so many ways you just don't understand. I would assume that's how they, that's the voice they'd use as well. Write a test for a function, repeat callback ncb. All right, it calls the callback cb exactly n times. n can be, ooh, it looks like we're getting into recursion here. This could be fun. Um, n can be any number you want in your test code. As before, a function's location we provided through process.argv2. Uh, callbacks and events. What was callback? What was that callback called or not? The event-driven nature of JavaScript is also the reason why we had to, to call the t.n function in the last level. The test has to know whether we are done. However, there is maybe a better way to do this with callbacks using t.plan n. When we call this in the beginning, we can tell tape how many assertions we are doing. And then we have an example down here. So this is good. So I might just quickly, what are we doing? We're going to, we don't need any of this stuff at the moment and we don't, we want this to now be repeat callback. And it's argument two. 
as before the function's location will be provided through. Yep, okay, so that's a function. Write a test for a function, repeat callback. Uh, we have tape. So then we want to go tape um, uh, callback uh, callback count because I think this is just the name and then function whatever function t was the convention of course it's a variable inside a function or an argument inside a function so we call it whatever the hell we like but I'm sticking with a convention because that way we won't get as confused t.plan how many tests are we running well that's interesting isn't it so we want to know we want to know how many there's a what's the word I'm looking for there's going to be there's an array of arguments uh, process.argv and we can do process.argv length or we can do it as many times as we want that was what it was saying wasn't it okay so we need to know calls the callback cb exactly n times n can be any number you want in your test code all right so we're going to plan for uh, two because why do we need more we're going to do two callback tests so that's going to be re repeat callback two and then a function gets returned. Um, maybe a better way of doing this using t.plan. Yes, yes, yes. How many assertions we are doing? Okay. In this example, we, are, we only have one callback, which will simply pass the test when it is called. So we could have used t.end within the callback instead. Okay, so you could have gone process.nextTick function and then t.end instead of t.pass what was t.pass pass message generator passing assertion with a message oh well it's only one callback and you know it's getting called because if it's getting returned then it's going to pass callback called okay fair enough fairly decent example um, However, you might see that if we had multiple callbacks in our tests, the t.plan n would come in handy. Yes, yes, I can see that. And maybe you'd turn it into a variable. Maybe you would pass the argument from the repeat callback. All right, so what are we doing? We're going to go... Why is it that they're doing process.next tick? Oh, that's just saying, okay, so effectively we want to do a t dot something, t dot whatever, t dot pass, t dot planned, that's not finish, skip, test name options callback, skip, finish, plan, and pass. We're counting callbacks though, aren't we? So we could do it as an if, or we can do some sort of magical recursive function here where it just actually keeps going until the variable of callback, the number of callbacks we're gonna run is reached. Mm, I don't know. Mm, t dot plan end would come in handy so I mean I could do it sometimes it's easier for me being a bit shit at programming to actually do it as a um, as an if statement or a for loop in this case but test dot next t dot plan one t dot pass call back called okay so Let's go var um, CB's, uh, how about count? There we go, count equals two. And then we go count. And then t dot, um, hang on a second, what was it? 
cat03, what do we use in tape? Um, sorry, in uh, t.equal. We're not doing a t.equal though, are we? Print. Um, what are we counting? Write a test of function that calls the callback exactly in tones. Functions, blah, blah, blah. Test for a function that calls the callback exactly in time. So what we want to do is we want to count the amount of callbacks. So we could just run the count, run the function that does the callback, and every time it runs, it counts. It adds to our count, and then we could just do an a t dot equals so we can actually just have one test t dot plan does this I don't know if this is making sense um, so let's call that um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for something that's running and something that's finished running so how many it's um uh, should and has Okay, so t dot plan count equals one, and then uh, callback count, repeat callback in CB. So callback should function. Um, and has plus equals one, or has plus plus, that'll do. <sighs> it's just giving us the callback, I don't know if we, it's giving us the function, calls a callback, write a test for a function that calls it in times and give me the number you want. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see what happens, because I'm re taking the function repeat callback, which has been given to us, so I don't actually know what it does, but it takes the number of times it should run, and a callback, and I think we can create our own callback, and a callback is just another function to run uh, that it actually just passes back after the functions run. So let's just do that. Uh, return. Let's return that. Return. No. Do we want to return it? I don't know. Let's. Has plus plus. Let's just see. So recall come back, and then we can just do a t dot um, equals. And should has and t dot equal oh equal t dot equal is there a, a message? Yeah, there is. So no, let's go back and um. Yeah, let's see what happens. A B string message. What's going on? All right, let's try that. Verify O oh, four. Oh, ha! <laughs> it worked. Oh my goodness! All right, let's see if it's anything like the thing that they've written. Let's go, let's get rid of the messages up there. All right, so we've got tape. We've got repeat callback, which is required process.argv. Thank you, NotPike. I didn't know if you were still there, so I appreciate the uh, kind words. Kind word, singular. We'll start with one word, we'll work our way up. Test, yes. Repeat callback, which is just a name. And then an anonymous function, which is tape's own callback. T dot plan four. 
uh, and we did the T dot plan one. You see, this is different, right? So this is interesting. This is a really different way of doing it, which is something that it sort of occurred to me, I think was sort of the way I was thinking about doing it initially, which is that they're running the function, which was what, I don't know if you can, yeah, running the function and it's going has plus plus. So I'm just, you know, incrementing a variable and then testing the variable at the end. Um, whereas they are testing the variable every time. And that's why I initially set that count variable to be, oh good, I'm glad you're getting something out of this as well. Um, so this is, this is sort of, this is interesting. Well, I think it's interesting. So we've set the amount of times that uh, the callback's going to be run. So let's rewrite this. So I just wanna, save as um, uh, 04 maybe rewrite.js. All right, so now we can just do a little bit of dicking around here, messing around. So if I just go, let's go back to what we were gonna do here and go count, and then we don't need that variable, and then our plan is gonna be the variable count, oh, but we're gonna wanna say it's equal to, I don't know, well, actually it's not get ahead of ourselves. 10 should be fine. <clears throat> so we get a uh, function, how many times it's gonna be written, which is written into their, um, their function that's being provided to us. So we can have a look at that afterwards as well. It might be interesting uh, to see what they've done to get that level of recursion, because I reckon it's just calling itself. It's just actually calling itself n amount of time. So whatever number we put in there, it just goes, I'll run this function and I'll, it'll call itself until you know that decrementer has got back to zero and then it returns, uh, which is hopefully straightforward and I think makes sense, but my words are not good, so. Um, var count 10, okay, so should is now not should, it's actually count. And the plan should run however many times that we set it um, count to. And this function should run however many times we've some since done uh, set count to. And rather than incrementing has, we should be able to, is actually, uh, okay, let's just get that right. Uh, T dot equal, is that what we're going for? No, what were we going for? Pass. Really? T dot pass? What's T dot pass? What are you? Generate a passing assertion with a message. Okay, so it's a test. Uh, okay, fair enough. I can sort of get that. Let's just think about this though, pass. And that should be something like, oh look, it ran. Um, because we've got a count happening, as long as it gets called, it means that it was successful. So I sort of understand that. So repeat callback is uh, a function which takes an amount of times it should be, it should be uh, run. And every time it runs, a callback function is also run. And if that callback function does actually get called, then it gets to say, oh look, I actually did something, you got here. Like you got to that, 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 um, that check. So that's fair enough, I can kind of understand that. So let's see if this is, uh, if my assumptions here are correct. They are, okay, so that's good. Cool, so now we've got I don't think there's anything else to say about that, unless uh, not Pike, if you have any questions about that. But I think that is pretty good. Oh, okay, uh, test anything. What do we got? Last one, to err is human. Oh, border collie, something to do with dogs, it's cute. Uh, let's go via5.error.js. Er, so hopefully we'll be dealing with errors now. 
Function feed cat takes any kind of food as a string argument and returns yum for everything you feed them. However, if you try to feed the cat chocolate, the function will throw an error. Write test for feed cat to be sure kittens can be fed yummy food without being harmed. The function will be provided through process.argv2. Well, that's great. Function t in treating each t as an object. Kind of missed that when you were describing tape. Yeah, that confused me as well um, because it's a... Let's go back there. Let's go via for blah, rewrite, that'll do. Um, var repeat callback. So one of the things you can, you can do is, well, it's probably just as easy to go over here. Um, test anything, exercises, and was it four? Tell me what is wrong, is that correct? Hang on a second, let me just Come on. Uh, call me maybe. All right. Tests. Fail uh, one, fail two, pass. Repeat callback if n minus one return callback or call repeat callback with n minus one. So that's the one that we saw before. But we. Hang on. What's going on? Maybe it's not in there. Index instruction solution require. Where is it getting its? Where is it getting its uh, process.argv2 file from? What is it actually passing at? Require to test or require tape. Hang on. I'll um. I'll back it up a second here. So var test equals required tape, and then test becomes a function that already knows that the callback being passed to it, whatever that callback, so that's the, the callback that we create, and then the variable that gets passed to it is only one one argument, one argument that gets passed to, to the callback and uh, tape already knows what that is. So there must be, this is where my ignorance is kind of coming into play here because the tape module itself, which is probably what we should be looking at here. If we really want to, wow, okay, stuff going on. This is a tape module. Yep, okay, so we've got all the stuff. Custom reporters, lib. Uh, it could be a little bit deep for me without knowing where to look. So all I know at the moment is that the callback that gets passed to the test function gets its own, it sort of defines its own argument, right? Like that, that argument is another function or an object, but it's definitely a function because you get, you get these methods, t.plan, t.equal, all of these ones that we've been looking at in the, in the docs. Uh, where's it? Does it say anything? Things that go well with tape, reporters, uncalled exceptions, others, methods, heavily influenced properly from node tap, test, create a new test with optional name string and optional ops, object, CBT fires with a new test object, T. Callback T fires with a new test object, T, once all preceding tests have finished tests execute serially so it's a test object that tape is providing so that's actually all of our t.plan t.equals all of that sort of stuff so it's going to be all the basic functionality of like you know 10 equals you know e equals 10 true but wrapped up into methods um, of which they're all described 
here, t dot not equal, t dot equal, t dot deep equal, um, using the strict comparators, which is something to do with like, you can't do, hang on a second, I think it's like two equals two is true, right? So there we go. So a deep comparator wouldn't work because two is a number. Of course, there's only, I don't know if you know this, there's only one number type in JavaScript. It's a 64-bit um, uh, bit precision um, uh, number with no, you don't get floats and any, you know, no, no Python magic. Um, but the weirdness of JavaScript is that uh, uh, two equals equals string two, like number equals string, can still be true. And uh, if you use the three equal signs for the comparator, then it uh, comes back as false. So that would be like not deep equal. So what we could do is we could always um, uh, clone the code and have a quick look and actually try and find where those um, methods are. I don't know, tell me if that's too boring. Um, or C data types, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or see exactly the same as C data types, except a hundred less of them. <laughs> uh, what are we doing? Let's go down somewhere sensible and dump this and do a quick, oh, and it's Substack. Prodigious, that lad, prodigious. All oh, praise the Substack. Um, uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for that thing that we were just talking about because my brain doesn't work. Grep. Grep. What? What? F grep minus dot F grep dot. Oh, you haven't said what you're searching for, you muppet. You're not doing it correctly. Really? Recursively. Where am I? Tape. Mm. Why am I being a muppet? F grep minus R I. Not deep equal dot. Ha! There we go. All right. So read me lib test test dot prototype dot not deep not deep equal and is not deep equal. Um, test test read me lib test dot js t dot not deep equal. So lib test dot js I reckon is a good place to start. Lib test dot js and then test.prototype not deep equal equals not equivalent not deeply not same oh it's got synonyms is not deep equal is not deeply is not equivalent I love it it's like no and it equals function okay so it equals a b message extra this dot assert not deep equal okay so it takes another a b strict. So it's the opposite of wherever deep equal is, which is not there. Typical. Um, again, tell me if this is too far down the rabbit hole, but it's interesting ish enough, I think. Uh, what's it going to be under? Probably lib again, yeah? What do we reckon? Lib dot. Test var deep equal equals require deep equal. Oh, okay. So uh, npm's, well, npm info deep equal. What was it? Uh, there was a hyphen in there, wasn't it? Equal. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm good. All right. Well, let's just keep going here. So we've, he's basically using another module, assert.deep equal algorithm as a standalone module, five times faster than wrapping assert.deep equal in try catch. Example, require console.dir equal equal. It's an array with method or another 
Oh, equal, using deep equal. Okay, so using deep equal, it's gone. Okay, so there's a function with two objects and they're both are equal, but then that one doesn't look equal. Uh, well, let's just try this for a second because I don't know if this is gonna work because that doesn't look equal to me. So, boop, equals not a function. What? Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, hang on a second. npm install globally deep equal. I thought that would have been installed already. Apparently not. So, node, try that again. Actually, let's try the whole thing. We should be able to copy pasture fairly confident true false okay so we're correct so um does that make sense not pike it's got a separate module here for basically going is this thing equal and you and you've got so console basically is just printing that out okay so we're getting true false in an array because we've got it here encapsulated in an array and inside the array are two items and they're effectively functions sure clear as mud um, so this is where it's a little bit inception right like we go into this module and then we look into the uh, Tears test, got it. <laughs> yes. So it's a test function that calls other functions that do the parts of the test that it wants to do better. So it's kind of, again, it's a wrapper. So it's that weird inception sort of thing. It's like an encapsulation of a set of other things, a set of other tests. And in this case, the NPM module deep equal, uh, which this is no deep equal. I think this is where we ended up, wasn't it? This is actually, anyway. Yes, rabbit hole, but still kind of interesting because deep equal A, B options, compare options A and B, returning whether they are equal according to recursive equality algorithm. Uh, if it's strict is true, then it uses the three equals, which we were talking about because you can compare strings and um, numbers and have them still come back as equal, which is freaking stupid. Um, and it's the deep equal module. So this is cool. I kind of I kind of enjoyed that. That was fun. But if we will get back to that, um, so the not deep equal is just is a method that calls the opposite of deep, deep equal by you know prefacing it with this uh, exclamation mark or obviously saying you know like not not true mm, not not spelling not true is false. So we've got not deep equal, A, B, strict true. So that means that, uh, so that's the options actually. If we open that back up again, that was kind of useful. Um, where is it, where is it, where is it? Options, here we go, A, B, deep equal, A, B, ops. And one of the options that it says and that we have is actually to ops.strict is true, if ops.strict is true. So over here, Strict is true as an, uh, an option object. So yes, when it does the equivalency of um, equal, hang on, equal to two, uh, two, two, it's uh, true. But if we go two, two, strict, uh, true, an object with an option saying, nah, be strict about it, then it's false. Cool, all right, I feel better about this. Where the hell were we up to now that we got derailed? Call me maybe to errors human. We, boop, all right. Uh, T is a, yeah, and again, everything's, a, a, everything's an object. So it passes in uh, its own test object into the callback and then we use that object with all of its wonderful methods like the equals and the and the uh, and the pass and all the others that we're using to do our tests uh, which is kind of cool what am i doing to error is human to per for line 
this is definitely making sense as a, a sub stack having involved in this. Um, what are we actually doing? Function feed cat takes any kind of food string, yada, 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 write test feed cat, Shulkinsky, yeah, function. All right, so we're back at uh, bio five and hang on. No, we don't have one yet. Okay, 05 uh, feline.js. Uh, what do we want? The, well, the tape equals require tape. And then the feed cat equals process.argv2. And write tests. Well, eventually our test is going to be like. Um, uh, don't, oh, if we do it this way, don't poison the kitty. That seems like a fairly poison -y. Uh, and then we're going to have a function which takes our magic function and then do things. All right. Uh, chocolate is awesome, so a cat's over to not make a wonderful combination of caffeine and theobromine in the chocolate can harm cats as well as dogs. There you go. Feeding chocolate to cats would therefore be considered an error. One way in JavaScript to deal with errors is to throw them, even though I know this is probably not the best way. If we want to deal with these errors, we can use try and catch like this. Try pet dog border collie. Um, Catch error console.error, it seems like it doesn't like that. Yeah, yes. Um, okay, let's just ignore that for a second. When we test things, we often say we want to make sure there are no errors. Well, that is not entirely true. We certainly want error free code. However, if someone else tries to do something weird with our functions, it still might be good to have an error. Yes, error checking is good. Got it. Don't feed chocolates to cat. That's also bad. So maybe we know that a dashend does not like to be petted. Well, we could test this behavior with t.throws function pet dog dashend. Okay, t.throws. That's interesting. That's the first mention of that. Let's go back over to t.throws. Hello, t.throws function expected message. <clears throat> so we're getting a function. Let me just jump ahead here in my brain for a second. Feed cat is a function function feed cat takes any kind of food as a string argument returns yum for everything you feed them. Okay, so it's a function returns yum unless it's unless the result unless you try to feed them chocolate. So you could just return the argument and test the return argument if that's what's going on. But that's their function. So how do we get the argument again? How do we get the argument into the function? That's the question. If we want to have feed cat. All right, so like if we go like well, so what do we want? We need t. What was t dot dot pass? T dot something. T dot. Let's go back here for a second. I'll just use another window and test stuff. Okay, cat o four. No, cat o four. Whatever. Something. T dot plan. Do you have a cunning plan? Yes, we have a cunning plan. Okay, so we want t dot plan something, and then t dot. While they seem to say that t dot throws is useful, it's not to be petted with all the good test of behavior. Now the test expects an error and throws an error if there is no error. Okay, the test expects an error and throws an error if there is no error. Mind-boggling, right? By the way, if you're familiar with functional JavaScript, you might already know that you could also write it into one line with t dot throws pet dot pet dog dot bind null dashend. Uh, no, not really. 
not straight off the top of my head, but we can get back to, well, it'd be nice if they had the Node.js bind. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the DuckDuckGo magic of bang syntax, MDN, and we should be able to get uh, just bind. All right, Moz binding function dot prototype dot bind. That looks good. Function dot bind this argument. Bind method creates a new function that when called has this keyword set to the provided value. Okay, so two dot throw is that this keyword would be pet dog dot bind dash and give us a this arg, the value to be passed as the parameter to the target function where the bound function is called, the value is ignored, and then arguments. Okay, so that's why null, because it's saying, um, if we're not passing it another function, we're just passing pet dog an argument. And t dot throws is a way of testing pet dog with the argument dash end. Why can't you just call pet dog dash end? Because this way you're calling it as a function without putting it inside of a function and calling it. Okay, I sort of see what's going on there, but that's a terrible way of explaining it. So what we're gonna do instead is say that t dot feed cat and dot well, we can do dot by null chocolate should throw an error. I'm gonna run this because why not test anything verify ver 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 verify o five. The solution is terrible and not correct. Good but sometimes it's kind of handy to see what you're actually gonna get out of it. Operator, okay, okay, correct function, ex not okay, correct function accepted. Wrong function not accepted, wrong function not accepted, correct function accepted, operator, okay, expected true, actual false. Um, all right, so we don't need to end anything here, do we? Because we've got t.plan1 and t.feedcat.binal chop. Uh, you're an idiot. Who's an idiot? I'm an idiot. Because it's not actually testing anything, is it? What was the thing we we're looking for? We we're looking for throws. Throws. Feed cat. All right, so we've got to put the feed cat uh, function with chocolate and throws should be an error. Try again. Still wrong, but wrong and better. It's a better wrong. Expected true, actual false. Oh, how does that work? Because it was saying that it wanted, it wanted, right, first anything, print. Um, now the test expects an error and throws an error if there is no error. Okay, so if there's no error, so maybe we haven't thrown an error. It expects an error. So feedcat.by null chocolate. So it throws. We feedcat.bind null chocolate. Um, what do we want? So this all comes back to how are we getting function feedcat, how are we getting chocolate into the cat? or trying to keep the chocolate out of the cat. Don't poison the kitty. Function t, t.plan1, t.throws, null chocolate. Or we can do it the other way if it makes it look a bit more easy to read at the moment as well, not pike. Because tell me if this is horribly confusing at the moment, but function, right? We can go t.throws function and we doink and Quit and that and all right. So no, hang on. Digga digga, digga digga, digga digga. 
Pikachu, what are you doing up there? You're right. You're right. You're not right. Hang on, what's going on here? T dot throws. Oh, it's all grey. I didn't see it there. You weren't meant to be there. That makes better sense. All right. Okay, let's stop helping me, Code Linter. You're freaking ridiculous. All right, let's try that again. Mm, that one. All right, wrong function. Operator okay. Wrong function not accepted. Not okay. Correct function accepted. Do we just go backwards there? Wrong function not accepted. So it worked more. It worked better last time. There is function feed cut chocolate. Okay, let's just, I reckon it, again, this is going to be the semantics of what it is actually asking us to do. Function takes any kind of food as a string, any kind of food as a string argument and returns yum for everything you feed them. However, if you try to feed the cat chocolate, test don't poison the kitty, feed cat. It doesn't have to, it doesn't ask to run it multiple times. I don't think it says anywhere here, unless I'm a complete muppet and you can help me out, that it's actually going to, it wants to pass in a whole bunch of random uh, arguments for the key feed cat function and then like test them all, which is quite often something that the node school uh, modules do. They actually throw, you know, great big wonderful tests at you where you're testing, you know, huge sort of sets of random data to make sure that it's catching all these weird cases. But this one doesn't seem to be doing it. So what is it asking? All right. Oh, you're an idiot. A function feed cat takes any kind of food as a string argument and returns yum for everything you feed them. So it has to return yum. So the test should be, throws should be okay. So that should be passing, but I reckon we might want a second test in there, and that second test is actually whatever. Why am I completely forgetting what it's uh, equal? Yeah, t dot equal uh, feed cat. Feed cat and then blah, and then it should be uh, yum. Yeah, because it, it, it's a test to make sure that if you do feed cat with some sort of food, the uh, the durian, the king of fruits. God, that's smelly. No, if you know. Whew, um, they love it though, folks love it. Doesn't taste too bad. I like it in a dried out sort of jerky form. That's not bad. Okay, wrong, wrong, and right. So right, wrong, right. So one of these, wrong function not, ex function, wrong function not accepted, oh, correct function accepted, and then wrong function not accepted. Operate. Okay, expect a true, actual, false. Um, mm -hmm. Nice, okay. So this is good. Let's get a module so that we can test it. Uh, vi catfood.js. And we're going to go module.exports equals function food. If food equals chocolate. 
throw new error no chocolate is chocolate kills cats there we go and then uh, else return yum okay that's closed that's unnecessary and that's fine so then we can go node o5 feline and then cats cat food explode test is not defined what what test don't poison the kid ah uh ha -huh. ha all right i don't know if you're still there not pike I don't know if you're still there, but uh, this is a really great example of the run feature showing you what actually happened and giving you something useful to work on. So it actually has referenced test. And it's like, oh yeah, no, that's what they call that's what they call it in the documentation, I think, and that's what got stuck in my brain. Uh, test where the there we go you went past the same options to test there you go methods var test equals require tape so I just made a typo but the typo wasn't wasn't isn't caught if you verify fee, fee line it just kind of says no you're wrong it's like oh, okay and then one of the things I noticed earlier and it did it again when if we just go test anything run it's, it's quite nice because there's a call which actually to somewhere where it says, oh, you know, that doesn't do anything because, you know, I don't have a, for example, uh, you know, the feed cat function, which is provided to the test suite. If you're just going to call the code manually, you know, node feline, well, we're going to have to give it something on process.argv to actually become the function that is feed cat. Okay. Fair enough, so that's why we just then made the function that they suggested, which was called cat something, I made it. Um, so now we've got a function that goes into feed cat, and if food is chocolate, it throws an error, else it returns yum. And so when we run it, you can see that, uh, don't poison the kitty. What did I do there? Tape, t dot plan, t. Okay, so seven. What have I done here? Something on seven. Five, six, seven. T dot equal feed cat durian. Um, yum should return yum. Feed cat is not a function. Feed cat is not a function. Process dot argv. Cat cat food module dot exports equals function food I didn't typo that anywhere did I that seems pretty straightforward to me module dot exports sometimes I confuse modules dot export and module dot exports uh, but I haven't in this case if food is chocolate throw new error no chocolate kills cats, else return yum. No, that's correct. Okay, and we can also try that as well by the feed cat equals require uh, cat food. And you don't need the dot JS when you're requiring from wherever, like a local directory. So feed cat. So if I go feed cat blah, it should just come back with yum. And if I go feed, bat, feed cat chocol chocolate, then it should explode and say error, no, chocolate kills cats, which is great because this means that the module is working. It's quite handy just to actually test what data comes out of a method or a module or a function when you're importing them or if you're reading the docs and it's like not really clear. Because quite often, like when you, because all of this stuff is about gluing all of the modules together. And sometimes there's, because we haven't even gotten into streams yet. I did do a live broadcasty thing on streams. I'll definitely do another one because they're quite good fun. Um, you can manipulate streams and it comes in as binary, but some 
some uh, other library, some other sort of node modules will automatically know that uh, how to deal with the stream. And so therefore you can just kind of assume that you can print out stuff or you can do stream manipulation, for example. But uh, that's because in the background, it's actually doing a, you know, um, uh, to string. So like uh, there's a to string method. Um, which you can run on things. Yep, played that game, nice. All right, um, yeah, so when you're gluing things together, knowing the data types that are going in and out of things is really handy. So anyway, the point of this was just to say, all right, well, we've ch tested the cat food um, module and tape is still, we are actually testing with tape. We have a uh, a function which we're calling from process.argv and then when we're calling t.equal feed cat yum should return yum so equal let's see if it's um, uh, t.equal so it's that equal equals expected with an optional description of the assertion message so if I give feed the function feed cat durian runs it should come back with yum right feed cat durian yum all right so that is equal of course it is feed cat durian equals yum true and we haven't accidentally thrown it inside the throws function so let's just run it again and actually let's just make sure we've written it properly feed cat is not a function my ass don't poison the kitty uh, t dot equal feed cat durian yum should return yum feed cat is type error feed cat is not a function hmm oh really but I exported it. It's definitely a function that we exported. We've used it. It's pretty functional. And now we're probably missing something. And by we, I mean you, not Pike. Where's it going wrong? <sighs> T.plan2. We want to do two tests. The first test is going to be is this function equal to this string? If it's not, give me the error message of should return yum. But we're not even getting there. We're getting on to like, error is on line seven. Feed cat is not a function. T dot equal, equal, equals, it's equal, isn't it? Aliases, ah, it's got an alias of equals. Actually, that's in the document. In the documentation, we saw that there's a whole bunch of aliases. Ah, look at them all, not equal. Right, so you don't even need to remember the, the method names particularly well. Um, use whichever one floats your boat. Equal feed cats. I, I don't know. What have I done? What have I done? Why is that not working? Don't poison the kitty. Use a blah, blah, blah. Well, let's do the opposite. Instead of running it manually, let's verify and see what happens. Operator okay, expected true, false. So one and two, wrong function not accepted, wrong function not accepted, not okay. Three, correct function accepted. So the correct function is accepted. So throws function feed cat chocolate. That should be an error, that should be an error, and that says how many we're gonna be testing. So I'm horribly confused. All right, because we're, you know, on a tight, on a tight timeline, and because we're only here for the giggles, that's what I wrote. Ah! I see it. Let's play this game. I see the error. I see it. Can you see the error? Check it out. One of the annoying things. 
especially the JavaScripts. I can't, I don't think the other ones, oh yeah, C, C is awful for these errors where you're looking at the error and it's like, that's not a function. It's like, ah, oh, looks like a function to me. What's the error? It's not on the function that it's pointing you at and saying that's the freaking error, is it? I've missed, I've missed the R in throws. I bet that if we throw an R in there, that the feed cat function, what? T dot equal, what? You're just driving me crazy now, computer. Feed cat during yum should return yum. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of the string in any second now, but uh, let's have a quick look here. Wrong function not accepted. It's it still reckons that it's line seven, eh? Your solution's not correct. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, test for other dumb stuff. Is there anything else? And actually throw shouldn't have come up as a, throw should have come up, throws. Alright, yep, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the flaming string. No, nah, it doesn't care. So what are we doing now? Because that just doesn't make any sense. Feed cat food equal t.throws function cat feeding function t.plant2 What? Okay, how is this wrong? No, not you, you. Am I completely bonkers right now and there is a typo that I'm just not doing or are we not allowed to throw an anonymous function inside throws? And instead we're going to go with... Uh, Okay, fika dot bind null chocolate. Is that correct? That looks like a plan. All right, let's find out if that's okay. This is great. This is going to be great because as soon as I find it. T dot equals equal equals their alias anyway, so it doesn't. So it's not that. It's about as nice as it can get. Oh, hang on. Feed cat dot bind. No, they're the same. <sighs> Yank word. Enter. Paste. Uh, paste. I almost give up because I do not understand how this is any way, shape or form different to the solution. So let's just save as 05 broken.js and rewrite it. var test equals require tape var feedcat equals Kill me now. I found it. It's me. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. <clears throat> okay, let's try this. Node. No, better still. I'll just explain it. It'll be easier. It'll be it'll be far more sane. Process.argv2, what is that? Effectively, it's a string variable, right? Like that gets dumped into the argument array of uh, running node. So if I was to go like node blah, no, I can't do that. Um, 
a via test.js and then uh, console.log um, uh, process.argv2. That's it. Right and quit. Node, con node uh, test uh, wobble. Okay, so just like the rest of us. Yes, I'm an idiot, just like the rest of us. So when, so this example here, which is a terrible example, but um, I've got a test file, right? And in it is just console.log uh, process.argv2. So all it does is it says, um, print out the first command line argument that's after, you know, node and the name of the file as a way of describing the way in which I've screwed up. So what I've done is I've actually, where it kept screaming at me saying, not a function, not a function. I should have started to think, oh, maybe it's not a function because it's not a function because what it is is just the actual string variable inside the argument array because I didn't require it. I didn't require, therefore I didn't turn feedcat into a function because I was meant to, uh, require it and now it's like saying this file over here read it and load up the module dot exports uh, and put it into this variable feedcat and that's where we take the function and then which is an object you know which is why we can just put that into feedcat and now feedcat is a function and then it might have its own methods its own you know variables whatever else but or attributes, whatever they're called, when you when you've got a variable that's on a on an object, but anyway, that's that's the that's what's going on. So I basically just had a string variable called feedcat, and feedcat was choking on t dot equals feedcat durian because that's the first instance where I was trying to call a function when actually it was just like nope, that's not a function. All right. Uh, feedcat is not a function. Oh yeah, it's still not. Why is it not? Because, oh, what is open? Can I open 05? No, um, no tab completion with my Vim. Maybe it's not open. Uh, Vim open file. Mm, uh, edit, edit, and what do we have? Broken feline.js. All right, so we're back here. So now we can go boop, require process.argv, feedcat, and throws dot blah. So the bind is saying this is a function, give it that variable and run it. So fair enough. We come over here, oh, yay, a node 05 feline.catfood.js is equal and passes and test anything, verify 05 feline.js is now all well and good and happy. And it was purely because I forgot that stupid require, but that's a really good thing to remember because it's all depends about what you're passing around. You're passing around, um, uh, objects or strings. All right, do we have any left? Was that the last one? Was that the last one? Completed. All right. Okay, that's uh, that's that. I mean, I'm still good to sort of pot around and do more things. What do you reckon, not Pike? Are you you want to go and play? You know, uh, Battlefield, or you know, go and watch the. Oh, is Rick and Morty out yet? I think Rick and Morty might be out soon. If it wasn't last night, maybe. Anyway, um, or, woo! <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yes, woo! Oh, and hang a second, I have a celebratory woo thing here somewhere. Let's find that. No, change. No, I can't. There we go. Rick and Morty is good though. And celebratory nine cat victory in the command line in the terminal. Um, so happy to do uh, another uh, 
another little session on one of the other one of the other workshoppers. Uh, I've done a bunch of them before. In fact, I, if you have a look at my um, SDR, yes, it can do SDR. What do you want to do with SDR? I've got. I was trying to run. Here's a here's an SDR thing oh, stuck underneath wires. Hang on. I have many SDR things. Uh, this is the, today's, well, the last week's sort of experiment is um, a, what do they call them? The GR8, the great, uh, the Chip Pro Dev Kit. Chip Pro Dev Kit with uh, running Ubuntu with uh, wireless and Bluetooth and the RTL SDR from Noelec. This is anyone who ever watches this. Hello, future humans who thought you were just getting uh, node school stuff. You're also getting some uh, computer security research uh, plugged into it. So I have my Hacker F with Porter Pack. I have my B200 Mini and I have my RTL SDR. And one of the things I was going to do, I was going to do this as a separate stream actually, once I was sort of like, you know, sufficiently done with the node stuff for a bit, is that I really want to uh, okay, this one's for, um, if you've just tuned in, <laughs> this is all going to be a little bit completely not node, but um, actually, where are we? Let's break out of this for a second and go over to, so you know that there's, so not Pike, you know that there's a GNU Radio live distro, live CD, USB, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, GNU Radio Live, uh, GNU Radio Live Setup, and then Git Browse, which is um, Git's alias to Hub, by the way. Uh, and Hub is a, a Go program, which is um, really handy. It does things like you can create a Git um, repository and add all your files to it, and then you can go um, Hub Create or Git Create, uh, and it'll actually create you mirrored you know that repo onto github so you don't need to mess around with it and do things like git browse so you can actually have a look so one of the things i was starting to do wow a month ago and i've got probably more updated code here on my computer but is actually using the gnu radio live examples to set up a bunch of uh, uh shell scripts um and kind of automated friendly examples, because one of the things I don't think there's enough of, and also because folks in uh, a certain environmental organization that I uh, do work for are really interested in making it a lot easier for people who have no clue how to program and no real SDR history on just getting some good examples working um, straight out of the box. And there are some tools, you know, as we know, <clears throat> that make, you know, life uh, a bit easier for, um, uh, for folks with you know some of the RTL SDR um, stuff, uh, and then you know if it detects things, it'll print it out. And but then you can do things like um, uh, plugging into like mapping for um, for ships or for airplanes for the ADSB stuff, and you know all of that. So what I've been trying to do is sort of think about the. This is one of the things, it's like what, what are the easiest things for somebody to kind of get an RTL SDR and immediately set up? And <clears throat> as we all know, virtual machines aren't fast enough to really take a full sort of, you know, 20 megahertz of data coming out of uh, a hack RF, but they're certainly fast enough to take two megabyte stream from an RTL SDR. So having a, a, a live, uh, a live distro that already has these things, I thought that the GNU Radio one was a good place to start. Um, uh, unless I'm completely wrong, because you've got ones, you know, you've got um, uh, Pentu and you've got Kali, and I, I you know, Vertec has been working with ADS. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it. I saw there was a tweet with um, him and. Uh, Jared, I think, was sitting in an airport somewhere, which was kind of like, oh, those two, they finally met each other. That's so good. Um, you know, sitting in an airport, looking at all the things coming past. But, um, I mean, I've got the Porter Pack as well, and it's a wonderful bit of kit. Uh, 
And it's a really good way of starting to be able to be sort of mobile and to see stuff. But it would be still really good to be able to kick off with some actual good or not good, but just easy examples. Because, you know, like it's always the taking, you know, taking the output of the of the RTL SDR um, and so catting it into, you know, uh, a named pipe. And then you're getting another program to access the named pipe and then present the data that way. So you're actually, you know, you're always kind of like doing very Unixy kind of piped data or you're just, you know, or you're using an actual pipe and piping the output of one command to another. And it, it's just not super friendly. And I'm like, please tell me I'm completely wrong and that there's definitely a better, that there's something that exists and I could be just like, oh, you mean like SDR for noobs, the really friendly, easy thing that already exists and be like, oh, that'd be great. But um, as far as I can tell, there just really isn't something like that. Havoc firmware still have it. Yeah, PortaPack is a good tool. Still having trouble using the Havoc firmware and still using the hacker of my computer. For real. Um, what's Well, I'm interested in what the problem is. Maybe we can talk about this on um, IRC later or something. DSP is still DSP. Yeah, yeah, digital signal processing. Yes, I, um, I did uh, get that book Mike recommends, the one from Oxford Uni or Cambridge University Press that was like, 60 pounds or something i do have that i've even got a fantastic pdf copy so now i can read it on my computer for ages there i was, I was traveling for months and months um carry on only that's how i always travel but I was, I was away for months and the only physical book i had was this dsp uh book uh but yes pdf that now so i can travel without physical paper but what was the point oh uh, yes gnu radio live sdr and um, and it's 66 days, so two months. So it's not too bad, but there we go. Can you radio live? So what I'd like to do, you have the same book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Chapter 11 um, with the practical examples. Ubuntu remaster, a set of automated scripts for taking stock ISO distribution image from Canonical and recreating it with changes and additional contents. Broken up into layered branches to allow you to make your own optionally encrypted ISO images. Customizers can branch off various layers to add their custom content to an existing image. So I didn't know about Ubuntu remaster until I started thinking. So what I was thinking is doing um, you know, a, uh, a set of examples and scripts that you actually uh, down, you can cl get cloned, right? But one of the problems for the, the environmental organization that I uh, have, you know, uh, a, a fairly long history with is that the internet is poor on ships at sea and it would be really good to be able to just give them a, an ISO file and say, here is the latest version and basically just re-roll uh, the, the GNU radio with the updated um, scripts that actually take all the tools, plug them all together and then automatically uh, you know, run that. And now <clears throat> the other thing I thought is it might be nice to have a menu to do that. And then I was looking at uh, you know, putting something in Python because you know, out of the node world and into the Python world, but you know, everything to do with radios predominantly Python, so we could have like a nice little Python menu interface where you can actually select, uh, you know, like run the um, the uh, you know the, the the ADSB map, and it pops up the you know or whether it's Google Maps or I haven't looked at OpenStreetMaps yet or whatever. Um, I mean, some of these things still have an internet requirement, but it's a lot less than downloading all the stuff you need. Uh, this is the sort of thing that I've been thinking about most recently with SDR. Uh, so what else can we do about that? We can either sit down, I think it might be a bit late for me to do a full, jump into a whole new session on this, but I'm definitely gonna be doing it tomorrow. Um, unless there's any particular, uh, well, I wonder, if, I wonder if my CPUs will keep up with, um, with the what's going on oh you'll be fine debian you'll be fine uh gnu radio so 
you know, firing up a virtual machine and then Git cloning and then running commands is still too much of a uh, too too much of an ask for folks who might have almost no linear experience. It, you know, if a little bit. So I'm trying to make it as easy as possible in that, like, you know, fire up this virtual machine, run these scripts. And the whole point of this is not really to make it super functional. It's just to actually get people excited about the possibility. So it's all one thing to read all the stuff on Hackaday about, um, <clears throat> you know, run the RTL SDRs and the HackRFs and the hacking of the things and the stuff. But getting started is still a complete pain in the butt for most people because it's just so much deep knowledge that you just have no idea about. And even the simplest thing of setting up, you know, a map that shows, uh, you know, airplane transponders is for me still you know, uh, a, a good solid few hours of sitting down and getting the software installed properly so that it works and then, you know, linking all the stuff together and following following along, uh, you know, random blog posts. Okay, leave closed, that's fine. So it'd be really nice to be able to have like, you know, Ubuntu desktop pop up, have it, you know, and of course, if we do it right, like if I do it, you know, if I do this whole reroll thing, it's, uh, there's no reason we couldn't just make a branch off the existing uh, GNU Radio three branches. It'd be hilarious if somebody's already done this. Live SDR Pi Bombs, Master, Live SDR, that's default. Master is behind. So it's the, the Live SDR is the active, the active branch. But this would be good. I might have to reach out and make friends and find out who who's interested in doing this. Yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, thankfully Mike has a few how-to videos about STR DSP. Yeah, 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 totally. So um, great Scott gadgets uh, and SDR slash great Scott gadgets slash SDR and. They're all um, really worth doing. And I know he's been very busy wearing yellow jumpsuits at DEF CON recently, but um, uh, they're all great. The fonts, yeah, I think I've seen, yeah, I've seen this. For Yardstick 1, yeah, of course. Okay, you want to port it over to the HackRF and, and the RTL, um, the Realtek dongle. Nice. And is it working at the moment? Do you have any... Um, no, there's no issues, so that's cool. Um, do you have... Because wherever it is, it'll be here somewhere. In one of my cases, I think, is... Um, yeah, I've got the, uh, the Yardstick one, so I'm happy to... Um, I can't remember if I've actually played with this six months ago, four months ago. Fonds, maybe I've just seen you mention this in the IRC channel, but um, okay. Let's see if brute force, every pin for one command. Yeah, I got the um, uh, open sesame working when I was at the start of the year, that was quite fun. The CC triple one zero chips and the CC one one zero zeros and the CC one one zero ones. That's right. Um, they're good fun. Awesome. So I will have a look at this tomorrow. And I'll get my yardstick one out, and I will ping you and ask you questions. Uh huh. And we have. Do 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 do. Oh, you've changed your uh, you've changed your Twitter handle. So we'll check back in on that one later on. Uh, okay. What do you reckon, not Pike? I reckon I could do with making a awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Uh, I will 
make sure that we are connected on the Twitters and I will test out your code tomorrow. Um, ah, yes, sweet. I will, well, what do you reckon? I reckon that's enough of a stream tonight because I'm gonna make uh, makes, us, makes us some foods, maybe have some more coffees and maybe do some other sort of non live streamy stuff. Um, cool, man, I'll have a look. Yeah, I'm in Vancouver, Canada at the moment in BC. So I will, um, I'll try and do a bit of a search. If you know of any, let me know. But um, you've got pictures up somewhere as well. I remember seeing these. Uh, awesome, awesome. Well, I'll see, not Pike. I'll see you on the IRCs, I'm sure of it. And the Twitters now. And uh, that was a nice little session. And so I'm going to do more of these anyway. So some of them are going to be uh, Node School stuff because I just enjoy it and I'm still kind of a sysadmin at heart and Node has kind of got that programming backend, not PHP, sysadmin-y kind of thing. Uh, which I see, Freenode, uh, predominantly HackRF, but I'm Gareth with two underscores, the same as my Twitter handle on uh, IRC as well. So you can generally find me uh, in the HackRF channel, which is where all the nice folks hang out, and but plenty of other places as well, um, on Freenode mainly. I'm in a couple of others, but they're only for one single channels and the sort of European satellite ones, which I can ping you the details with later. Uh, but for now, I will hang up from the live streaming with the coding, which segued very beautifully into software defined radio. So that was kind of fun. Um, and I'll do another set of stuff tomorrow. Uh, awesome. Uh, check you later. And thank you any future humans that may finally have got this far uh, and on our derailed node school uh, testing environment live stream. <laughs> All right. Bye.